वेलकम टू आवर भिडियो प्रेजेंटेशन आवर प्रोजेक्ट इज ऑन मेकिंग ए टिकटेक्ट टू गेम यूजिंग द डिजिटल लॉजिक डिजाइन इन दिस शर्ट प्रेजेंटेशन उल डिसकस अबाउट द गेम प्लान अफ टिकटेक्ट टू लॉजिक डेवलपमेंट अफ द गेम पी सी भी डिजाइनिंग एंड द हार्डवेयर इम्प्लीमेंटेशन अफ द गेम उ उल प्ले द गेम यूजिंग पुश बटनस एंड आवर गेमिंग आउटपुट उल भी शोन इन एल इडिस फर सार्किट डिजाइनिंग उ उल यूज द सफ्टवेयर प्रोटियास एंड फर द पी सी भी डिजाइन उ उल यूज द प्रोटियास एर एस दिस इज द कनेक्शन अफ सुइच इन प्रोटियास वेन द सुइच इज ओपन this node is grounded and when the push button is closed this node becomes high for a 3 by 3 tic tac toe game we will need nine switches all having the similar connection as shown before now to determine whether a button is pressed by player 1 or player 2 we will use exclusive or gate also known as xor gates this is the truth table of xor gate From the truth table, we can see that the XOR gate gives one only for odd number of one inputs. The nine push buttons mentioned earlier are the input of this XOR gate combination. If any odd number of push buttons are pressed, the output of the final XOR gate will be one, and for any even number of push button pressed, the output of the XOR gate will be zero. And this is true for the whole system. Here there is a NOT gate at the output end, which inverts the output of the XOR gate. That means each time the first player pushes a button, the output of the circuit will be one and zero. And for the second player, the output will be zero and one. We will use the output to light the LEDs, but of course some modifications are needed before doing that. The output of our game will be shown in LEDs. Each LED should be capable of representing the both players. That's why bicolor LED is being used. Each color will represent an individual player. In our project, the common cathode LED was used, which remains in zero condition only when both of the pins are high. If any pin is low, then the LED will light. The light will change if the pins interchange their values. The practical bicolor LED has three pins, of which the middle one is connected to the power. And these two input will be drawn from the output of the previous circuit. Here the nine bicolor LEDs will show the progress of the game. The LEDs are arranged in a similar fashion with switch arrangement to avoid confusion while playing. This LED is also a bicolor LED that will go on if any player wins. And this single color LED will go on if the match is drawn. Now, the problem with using the push button is that it loses its data instantly. That means just the moment we remove our finger from the push button, the previous data will be lost. hence the corresponding led will just blink once so we are going to need some mechanism that will store the memory of the button for this purpose we will use this flip flop combination these two flip flops will store the values of two sets of the led so that the led will not go off even the push button is opened now even this circuit has some shortcomings when this push button is pressed this node becomes high and these two flip flops get positive edge of the clock and hence they store data Now what will happen if a button is pressed twice in a row suppose when player 1 presses this button this led will give red at the same time the output of the xor gate shown earlier will be reversed now if player 2 pushes the same button the flip flops will get another positive edge and the light will change this problem allows a player to cheat in the game to prevent this problem we will need yet another flip flop which will store the memory that these two flip flops have had their positive edge once before this is the circuit for that in this circuit when we push the button this node becomes high and so these two flip flops get positive edge of the clock now no matter how many time we press this button the output of this flip flop will remain high as before and hence these two flip flops will never get another positive edge and so the memory stored in these two flip flops will remain unharmed until the reset button is pressed this button controls the reset pins of the flip flop when we press this button the game is restarted for nine buttons we will need nine flip flop combination like this again the xor gate combination mentioned earlier faces the same problem of losing data because of the push button so instead of taking the inputs directly from the button we will take the inputs from the flip flop circuit hence these additional nine xor gates are used this nine xor gates are connected to the output of the flip flop in reset condition all the outputs of the flip flop are zero which will change if any button is pressed thus the button pressing information is brought to the xor gates 
Now let's focus on finding a winner. There are 8 different ways to win a 3x3 tic-tac-toe game. If any of this combination is achieved by a player, the game must be ended there. For this condition checking, we will need 8 3 input AND gates. This is the circuit implementation of condition checking. These 8 AND gates each has a winning combination as its input. Suppose a player wins a game diagonally. That means number 1, number 5 and number 9 LEDs will light. If we press number 1, number 5 and number 9 buttons, this AND gate gives 1 and thus the output becomes 1 and 0. We will drag this output to the winning LED. For two players, we will use this similar circuit twice. This is the total circuit for winning LED. These two condition checking segments inverted output will go to the side pins of the winner deciding LED. If this player wins, this inverted output will be 0 and the bicolor LED will show that this player has won. For a drawn match, a single color LED will be on. This is the circuit for a draw condition. In a drawn match, all the buttons are pressed. These three AND gates take the input of the buttons and this AND gate takes the input from the winning LED. If the match is drawn, the output of the both AND gate will be high. Hence, the output of this final AND gate will be high and this LED will go on. Now, it is very important that after a winner is found, the game must be ended right away. That means, when a player wins, the remaining unpressed buttons should be blocked from interrupting the system. For example, Suppose after pressing these 5 buttons, we found a winner. Now we have to prevent other remaining switches from making any change in the circuit. For doing this, an additional AND gate is being used. One input of this AND gate is coming from the winning LED. And the other input will come from a switch. Now, if a player wins, the output of this AND gate will be 0. So, no matter what may be the input coming from the switch, the output of this AND gate will always remain 0. We place this AND gate before every flip-flop segment for an individual button. Thus, after we find a winner, any further switch pressing will not affect the LEDs until the reset button is pressed. Now, this is our whole system. For better understanding, we use default pins in the Proteus. Thus, we broke the whole system in different parts. This segment is the button segment. When a button is pressed, this information goes to the AND gates. The other input of this AND gate is coming from the winning LED. From this AND gate, the data goes to the flip-flop circuit. When the flip-flop circuit gets its clock, these two flip-flop store the data coming from the XOR gate combination. This is our XOR gate combination. The input of these 9 XOR gates are coming from the flip-flops. Thus, after a button is pressed, this XOR gate becomes high and this XOR gate also becomes high. So, the output is 0 and 1. At the same time, the output of this flip-flop will go to the condition checking segments. These two are the condition checking segments. The output of these two condition checking segments goes to the winning LED. And these three AND gates of the draw circuit exit input from this XOR gates. Now the gaming LEDs are connected to the Q bar of the flip flops. The Q bars are used because this is common cathode and both sides are needed to be high for zero condition. Now our game is ready. And here are the yellow lines. Now this is our reset button which is connected to the resets of the flip flop. So by pressing this button we can restart the game. Before designing the PCB, we replace the buttons and the LEDs by connectors. Now we are ready for PCB designing. For PCB designing, we are going to use Proteus RS. This is our PCB design. We have put ICs in both layers. The blue lines representing the top copper and the red lines representing the bottom coppers. And these green lines will be manually connected to avoid complexity of wire. Now if you go to the 3D visualization, you can see this is the top portion of our PCB. These are the LEDs, these are the switches. These are the AND gates and these are the flip flop devices. Now this is the bottom view. These two segments are the condition checking segments. These two ICs are AND gate of draw circuit and these six ICs are EXO segments. This is the hardware implementation of our project. These nine are gaming buttons. This is the reset button. These are the gaming LEDs. This is the winner deciding LED. And this is the LED for draw match. These three are AND gates. These two rows are flip flop ICs. And in the bottom portion, these two segments are condition checking segments. These two are AND gates and these six are XOR gates. This is the circuit connection for power. This is a small transformer. This is the rectifier circuit and this is a 705 IC. Now our project is ready for gaming. The red wins diagonally. The yellow wins. This is a draw match. That was all. Thank you for your patience. If you have any further query, you may contact us.